Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module, we'll continue our journey down the path of the four cardiac examination views. Specifically, in this module, we're going to look at probe position C, known as the apical view of the heart. I hope you've been able to join me prior for looking at probe position A, the parasternal views, and probe position B, the subxiphoid views of the heart. So the apical view of the heart is an excellent view and gives a great deal of information about our patient's heart as it shows all four chambers of the heart in relation to one another. Therefore, the apical view of the heart is preferred by cardiologists as it shows the synergy of all of the chambers of the heart to one another. Now let's take a look at a pictorial showing how to perform the apical view of the heart. Preferably, you're going to be using a small footprint phased array type probe that can easily get in between the ribs. Position the probe directly underneath the left nipple at about the point of maximal impulse of the heart with the probe indicator over towards the patient's right side. Now that's with the caveat that the ultrasound screen indicator is positioned towards the left of the screen. Now moving the patient into the left lateral decubitus position can improve imaging from the apical view of the heart as it moves the heart closer to the probe and moves the lung out of the way. Thus it's important to consider moving the patient into this position when performing the apical view of the heart. Now let's learn how to interpret the images that we'll obtain. We see here a pictorial to the left and an ultrasound image to the right. As we're imaging from the apical view of the heart, we're closest to the ventricles. And in this image, we see the left ventricle to the right of the screen and the right ventricle adjacent. The atria from the apical view of the heart will be further away, thus posterior to the ventricles. And we see here the left atrium just below the left ventricle and the right atrium below the right ventricle. We also see the valves, the tricuspid valve to the left and the mitral valve to the right in between the left atrium and the left ventricle. We can also appreciate the white line surrounding the heart, which is the pericardium. Now let's take a look at a video clip showing the apical view of the heart in action. This is taken from a medical student triathlete, so let's take a look at that left ventricle. We see the left ventricle in its more superficial location to the right of the screen. Notice the percentage change from diastole to systole. Note the walls almost touch with each heartbeat, indicating a good contractility. We see the right ventricle to the side of the left ventricle and the two atria posterior to the ventricles. Notice the mitral valve in between the left atrium and the left ventricle and the tricuspid valve to the right side. Notice here the absence of any significant pericardial effusion. Let's contrast that last clip from this patient who has a dilated cardiomyopathy. And as we look at that left ventricle from the apical view of the heart, we see a very poor percentage change from diastole through systole. This is indicative of a very poor contractility of this heart. We see the right ventricle to the side of the left ventricle and the two atria posterior. Notice the sluggish movement of both the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. We see a little bit of pericardial effusion, that little black rim around the heart, also going together with this patient's cardiomyopathy status. Here's an interesting video clip of a patient who presented with acute shortness of breath. And what we notice here is the right ventricle and the left ventricle closest to the screen, but we see here a very large pericardial effusion circumferentially surrounding the heart. And notice the heart swinging back and forth in all the pericardial effusion. This gives rise to the phenomenon known as electrical alternans or different sizes QRSs on the EKG. Here's a patient who was in bad shape and presented with acute shortness of breath. We see a very large pericardial effusion, and let's look specifically at the right ventricle. Notice that it caves in from diastole due to the high pressure in the pericardial sac. Thus, this is indicative of advanced cardiac tamponade. This patient will need a stat pericardiosynthesis procedure. So in conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you the Soundbites module going over the apical views of the heart. This is an often neglected view, but one that gives a great deal of information about your patient's heart and really should be routinely integrated into the cardiac echo examination. It's best to move the patient into the left lateral decubitus position to optimize imaging from the apical view of the heart to see all four chambers of the heart in relation to one another. So I hope to see you back as Soundbites continues.